are we all on our own in terms of pricing our work? Yes, but we we give you we give you pretty specific guidelines on what we recommend and what we advocate. Um, we usually advocate. So the way that the web software works is you have total control over everything, right? Well, you can make it easy or you can make it hard. Let me say easy. 250% markup across the board. And I'm talking about for your prints, right? For your originals, you have to set those because you know our system doesn't know what they cost, right? Um, we say 250% across the board on all the prints because a lot of what we advocate involves running sales. Um, you know, a lot of people get sensitivity on sales. The only two companies in the world that don't run sales that I'm aware of is Tiffany's and Louis Vuitton. Every other brand in the world <laughs> runs sales. Somebody, al some somebody also told me is um, Hermes scarves. Or, or is, is Hermes more than scarves? I don't know. I honestly don't. I know it's a big company, but I don't, I don't know anyone else that doesn't run sales, okay? Everyone else does. So we'll never want you to be in a position where you're marking your work down 10, 15, 20% and then not have the margin built in there to do that, right? Um, you know, so that's, that's how we do that. In terms of pricing the originals and just pricing the work in general, you know, anytime you're running a business like this in a digital business in, in, in specifically, you know, rather than get emotionally wrapped up into my too high or my too low or wherever you are, because people screw up on both ends, too high and too low, ask yourself, is the decision I'm about to make a reversible decision or not? And if it's easily reversible, you have nothing to worry about because you can change it. And, and we have to always tell ourselves that. Like we have this as like a premise on our company. Like, is this a reversible decision or not? If it is, then just go. What are you asking me for? Because you can change it right back, right? Like we could have all the prices on your store marked up 2,500% and take it live right now today. And you could have it there for a month and everyone was complaining. Okay, guess what? Let's take it down. No one's going to care. No one's never, oh my gosh, Michael raised his prices up six years. I'm like, no, no one's ever going to know that. No one cares, right? So you can raise them up, raise them down at any point in time. Um, you know, I, w we have certain advice. You know, if the work's not selling at all, then probably not a good idea to raise it, right? Um, but sometimes, believe it or not, people price too low. And then when they raise it, they actually sell more because there's a higher perceived value. So it's not, it's not like, you know, chiseled in stone the right way to do it. The only thing to chisel in stone is, you know, uh, uh, is it reversible? Yes. Then let's just get it in the water, start marketing and find out, right? I also asked you, uh, <clears throat> will you cover a few basics on how people find your websites? And I think you did. Yeah. Capture it the emails, email them regularly. Yes. Um, you post on socials, you run specials. Yeah. Uh, you have live art shows and then, and only then, and those are the muscles you talked about, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then only then do you do paid ads once you get all those things going, right? Yeah, exactly right. Once you have, and that's, that's where like that fishing line analogy comes in, right? Like you can't, you can't afford to go fishing until you have all those various different lines in the water. All those lines in the water are doing all of the normal regular marketing activities that today's day and age calls for. And it takes a while to build it. It takes a while to build those up. Right. Um, but we, we, we normally say too, like, we're always playing with the number, but we really don't want you getting into running ads at all until you sold at least $2,500 worth of art directly from your website. Just cause you know, you have to figure out if you have a product the market really wants first. Right. And a lot of people say, well, Oh, I've sold art my whole career. And it's like, okay, if that's the case, it'll be very easy for you to sell it online. Right. But you need to validate to a certain extent too, that you have a, you have a, you know, a product the market really wants. Like there are some people that come aboard that have been doing this for a long time and you know, they're selling like 30 or 40 or 50 or $60,000 a year. And it's like, okay, you're ready for ads immediately. Right. But you are, you obviously have something else figured out, but for everyone else, you got to get the marketing muscles first. Otherwise, you know, it's like I told, it's like I told, um, what was the other guy's name? Dan, that you're just going to be lighting the money on fire, you know? So and I thank you. I'll, I'll let you go. I appreciate your time. Um, the last question, I'm not the artist, my wife is. Mm -hmm. But do you get uh, questions about haggling? Do people try to haggle with the artists online? Oh, massively. And in the, in the, in the higher up the price goes, the more the haggling happens. The higher up the price goes, the more the haggling happens. Like, you know, that's that's the dirty little secret is like, it, and, and to answer your question, if if it's a print sale, just whatever the price is online, not that much haggling, not usually, right? But the higher up you go in price, like it, it, there's a directly correlated relationship. The higher up you go, the more haggling there is because wealthy people did not get that way by paying retail. Sorry, they just didn't. 
And you know, w w when all of these artists come on to me too, and, and this is like another pet peeve, and they're like, people have told me never to have sales, it devalues my work, right? Or I would never put sales language on anything that my art is. You know, someone in art school told me that that's gonna cheapen me and that people will never buy. And I sit there and I'm like, the people that gave you that advice have never sold a single solitary thing in their lives, in their lives, right? Like every single solitary high net worth individual that buys originals, and this gets particularly crazy once you're into the 15 and 20 and 30 and $40,000 range. Like they don't pay retail ever, ever. They're always grinding. So yes, the higher up you go, the bigger of a thing it is. What's up, YouTube? Thanks for checking out the Q&A. What if you have your own question? First, uh, you can leave me a comment below on this YouTube video. I see them. I will respond. Uh, number two, uh, definitely encourage you to subscribe. It's very easy to do. There's some fancy motion graphics going across the screen now. Uh, but there's a subscribe button. There's a bell button. You'll know when we're live. You can come on and say, Patrick, I have a question, uh, even from your YouTube app, which is super handy. And then the third is... Three times weekly, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, free Zoom calls, we call them the Art Business Workshops. There's going to be a link uh, directly below me in this description. You can sign up, uh, they're free. You can come answer your question, which I'm sure will be awesome. And I will do my measure best to uh, make sure my advice is slightly better than marginal. Uh, no, but I'm, in all seriousness, I'll, I'll, I'll take a crack at answering it. Thanks, uh, thanks for checking out this video.